come join me? Yes. I don't even know if folks can see me. Hi. I'm... <laughs> I was about to say, hi, I'm Nadia and Rob. <laughs> hi, I'm Rob. I'm Nadia. <laughs> I'm uh, going to be the camera woman today. Yes. Rob's going to be the one talking about some of our favorite things on this table <laughs> that are very sharp, but they're friendly. <laughs> Um, as you can see, we do like our, our sharp cutting instruments. Um, and we have a few, all of which we actually use regularly in our cooking. From This is the uh, recently acquired bread knife for managing Nadia's sourdough loaves and a beautiful slicer that my aunt gave me years and years ago. Big chef's knife, pasta knife, slicing knife, chef's knife, vegetable knife carving knife for meats and a beautiful little paring knife. Now the ones we use absolutely daily are the chef's knife, which is a nice shun Japanese chef's knife, and the little beautiful shun paring knife. And lately I've been getting into sharpening these knives using Japanese sharpening stones and a, uh, a leather strop. And I'm getting to the point where I'm getting them pretty sharp. But I've been feeling lately that we sort of had a gap <laughs> in the size because I, I tend to use the chef's knife a lot, but sometimes it's just a little bit big for slicing the things that I'm slicing. And yet I find the paring knife in my hand is just, it's a little too awkward for me to manage. It's, it feels a little small in my hand. So we decided it was time to sort of splurge. And I felt like now that I'm, I'm into sort of sharpening the knives, and I'd like to learn more about that process. Uh, it was time to sort of step up to a really beautiful handmade Japanese knife. And this is the knife. This is a beautiful handmade Japanese forged knife. And I'm just going to consult my notes for the pronunciation. It's from the Hitohira brand of knives and the blacksmith is Matsumi Hinora and he is a fourth generation a blacksmith of Japanese knives. He and his father work as a, uh, as a pair, and between them they have over a hundred years of knife making experience. So, this is a carbon steel blade, which has been hand hammered to give it this beautiful blackened finish, and then honed and sharpened. The wrap here, this is a buffalo horn wrap, this beautiful surface here. And this handle is made out of hoe wood, which actually comes from the camphor tree from which we get camphor oil. We were both really pleased to try out this knife in the store, and it seemed to work really well for both of our hand sizes, which is quite a span between the two of us. So I'm really thrilled. If, when you're buying a knife like this, it feels like you're buying a piece of blacksmithing history. So the classic test of a sharp blade is the, the paper cut test. And I just recently sharpened and honed our chef's knife. And I'm getting to the point where I'm getting it pretty, pretty sharp. That cuts through paper rather nicely. However, <laughs> this blade is just a whole <laughs> different experience. It just, it, it seems to leap through the paper and just glides through paper effortlessly. So that is a truly, truly sharp blade. Clean up all the shards. So let me show you a little more realistic feel of how this knife cuts. We can start with a nice Ontario field tomato. And it's funny because a lot of people use a serrated, whoa, okay. no, no bleeding. <laughs> a lot of people use serrated blades for cutting tomatoes, but I don't like it because I feel like I'm tearing through the skin rather than cutting the skin. And uh, I notice, particularly when we do photography, sometimes it shows the torn skin. So if you have a really sharp knife and you go to cut a tomato, it just parts the skin beautifully. 
like that. And you can cut ludicrously thin slices. Absolutely effortlessly. I'm hardly putting any pressure on the knife at all. Beautiful thin slices like that. When you're working with a carbon steel blade, it's always very important to wipe it and keep it as clean and dry as you possibly can so that it doesn't get discoloration. Eventually it'll build up a bit of patina, which a lot of people like, but you don't want it sitting in moisture. While we were in Tosho, the knife store, they gave us a big fat carrot to cut which is actually, it gives you a really good feel of how the blade slices through a, a thicker, denser. So here's a beautiful organic heirloom carrot. And one of the things that matters to me is that with my big hands, when I do the sort of claw grip to protect my fingers when I'm cutting something, the knife needs to be tall enough to be able to bridge onto my knuckle. So that's one of the things that I look for in a knife. So if we just sort of slice through this, it's got a beautiful, oh, wow. That did not <laughs> Okay, I'll take a slice off of that. So let me just. Beautiful color. Yeah. Here's this beautiful heirloom tomato. And when I'm slicing, I bend my fingers under, so it's important that the knife itself is tall enough to bridge onto my knuckles when I'm doing so I can keep my fingers safe but guide the blade through the surface. And it just sort of pushes the, pushes down through the carrot and makes these beautiful, beautiful slices in the pattern the carrot is really beautiful. And notice how clean the slices are. There's no sort of tearing or anything on the surface. And if I'm really feeling on target, I can go for really thin slices sometimes. It's like potato chip thin. And I thought this would be nice to slice. This is a rainbow radish, one of these sort of multicolor radishes. Watermelon, watermelon radish. <laughs> That's right, watermelon, not rainbow. <laughs> Sorry, it's only one color. It's just red inside, but it's it, they sometimes have beautiful. So, yeah, there we go, beautiful red and white stripes, and this is just cutting through that beautifully, sort of effortless. It feels like the knife just wants to cut for you. Beautiful patterns. It's so effortless to cut through. When you're wiping the knife, you want to be careful not to slide it into the cloth because it'll just slice your cloth. <laughs> <laughs> so there's our latest acquisition. Beautiful handmade Japanese knife. There we go. And this is considered a petty knife or sort of a smaller version of a chef's knife. Now, since we have such a nice knife collection, we also were looking for a new uh, knife holder and I haven't really seen one until recently. I came across this online from a company called Sticks and Boards and they are an Ontario company. Their uh, headquarters is near uh, Ottawa and they are furniture makers first and foremost but they found that they wanted to do something with their scrap wood from the furniture so they started a smaller wood shop to make sort of household decorations and things like cutting boards and knife board knife holders to make to use up the scrap and now they've used all their scrap and it's so successful they have to actually buy wood specifically for this but We found this beautiful wood board, and now I don't remember the species. Maple? 
Is it maple she and... She said it's maple, I think. But it's maple and... Walnut? Walnut and maple. I was right. <laughs> so, we found this beautiful knife block made from maple. The slats on top are maple and the sides are walnut. And I really like the combination. What I like about this is that the design is open. So when the knives are inside, they're hanging open and any leftover moisture can just evaporate away rather than staying on the knife. And this holds virtually all of our knives. And they just hang beautifully inside the slats. Mm. <laughs> So I love how the knives hang freely inside with air space around them so that they can, any leftover moisture can evaporate easily. And it just looks really beautiful with all these knives in it. So that's where we are with our knife collection and I'm sure there might be a few other purchases, but we'll see what happens. I can tell this is this can become a bit of an addiction, <laughs> these uh, beautiful handmade Japanese knives, because each one really feels special and unique. So <sighs> we'll see what happens. And we do actually use all of these knives. <laughs> all the time. Yep, some more than others, but yeah. It's nice. It's nice having really sharp tools to work with. Yeah. I think that's so. good. I love, I love the knife. <laughs> All right. Thanks everyone. Enjoy and remember, subscribe, like, and hit the alert button. The notification bell. The notification bell. <laughs> <laughs> bye guys. Bye bye. Okay. All done. Shall I turn the AC back on?